Okay, so this is going to take us through a quick tutorial on moving um, terrain from Formit, which is a new feature in Formit, into Revit to generate topography. So really, really cool process, super simple. Um, I think this process is going to evolve as the um, connection between Formit and Revit uh, continues to evolve as well. So it's actually going to get even easier. But so far, this is sort of the fastest, quickest method that I've found in terms of doing this uh, and replicating the process really, really easily. So first thing I'm going to do inside a Formit is grab my location. And right now I'm working with my studio, my second year studio, on a project in Haiti. So I'm just using the latitude and longitudinal, co longitudinal coordinates here. Um, uh, so we're 18 um, by negative 74. Uh, if you notice, this little button has now changed. It's import satellite image and terrain, which is super awesome. So we're going to grab that. I'm going to zoom out so I'm encompassing the majority of my site. And then select uh, finding the happy median there is tough. And then, and then uh, finish importing. So this is going to bring in um, the flat terrain. So with the image map on it, one-to-one uh, -one scale, but you'll notice that little information box that popped up right there regarding um, turning your layers on and off for terrain. And I haven't found a button for that yet. I'm going to guess that there will be a button really soon for that because what I can do here is I can turn on the terrain button and then there we go. We now have a full terrain. And if you'll notice, this is also a solid piece of geometry, which makes me really happy because we can do some basic manipulations with that and in an easier way, send that to the 3D printer and send that through to the CNC router. So I'm super happy with the fact that uh, Formit is turning that into a solid object for us. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this underlay really quick. So that was just the um, satellite image on a two-dimensional plane. Um, I want to export only this piece to Revit. And that's a really simple process. I really shouldn't even be using the word export. Um, I'm just going to do a save as. So save sketch as locally. And for right now, I'm just going to write it to my desktop so it's easy to find. And I'm just going to call this um, Haiti. Let's call it Haiti site. And I'm going to leave that as the default format file type, which is .axm, and hit save. So inside of Revit, so this is a brand new scene in Revit, the AXM file format type is going to import directly in, in its native format, at one-to-one -one scale. So all that I need to do is insert, and then we are going to import CAD. So I'm going to go to my desktop and grab that Haiti site.axm file or the format file. So there's Haiti site.axm and open. So um, if you notice, it's it's uh, already in place. Uh, it came in origin to origin, right? So it's centered. If I look at that in 3D, you can see that is ready to go. If I change this to realistic, you will also see it's going to bring in that satellite photograph, which is super, super handy. Now, um, when I create the topography, I need to do a little bit of additional work so I can use that as an underlay to map out roads, things like that. We'll cover that as well. But what we want to do next is turn this file into a topography file. So to do that, I'm going to go to Mask and Site, Topo Surface, and I'm going to create a new Topo Surface from an instance. I'm going to select my overall, uh, and I can just keep all those selected. Those are the layers coming out of Format, and say OK. And that gives me all of those points, right? A um, few little points in the corners here that I want to delete. Um, I don't need that. And let's see where else it's created. Extra points. It's created one right here. It's grabbing, so it's grabbing the bottom corner of that solid object. And we don't we don't need those. Um, 
there's going to be two points probably here and here for those corners. So I could even kind of zoom in and delete those corners if I really, really want to be anal retentive about it, which most of us are. So that's kind of what we do. So I've gotten rid of those four points at the bottom corner. Okay, so now I can go ahead and green checkbox that, create that terrain. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select using the tab key, that original surface. And let's just kind of slide that out of the way a little bit. So I'm going to use my move tool and let's just move that over um, predetermined amount. So what we have now, and let's change that back off of realistic to hidden line. We've got my hidden line drawing with the topos, and I've got that original geometry. So what I want to do last is I want to export a decent resolution image of this to slide in as an underlay underneath that. Um, it would be great if I could just kind of rip that image out of format um, and pull it directly to an image editor. I haven't found a way to do that yet. So the method that we've been using is I want to go back to this flat image and I'm going to set format up as an orthographic projection and I want to look at it from the top view. From here, I'm going to export this view locally, not as a three-dimensional file, but as an image file. Um, this resolution is fine, sort of the default resolution, um, but typically I would take that up to like, let's do a 4K, uh, and we're going to hit export. And again, it's going right to the desktop. It's going to save it as a ping file or a JPEG file. Um, you guys know me, I like JPEGs better. They're lossy, but they're smaller. And that's what helps my life out some. So hadesite.jpg and save. Then we're going to go into Photoshop. We need to do some quick edits with this. So I'm going to go open desktop, Hadesite JPEG, because it should have exported an image that I need to crop, right? So it's given me all of this desktop. And what I really need to do is crop right off where that background sort of graph papery looking stuff, the X, Y axis grid from format, I need to crop that out um, so that it's a little bit easier to align that image with the terrain inside of Revit. So I usually start just by going rough, just to the outside, and now I'm going to zoom in. Um, and this is not going to be super precise. Um, it never really is super precise because we're dealing with pixels, but we can get it pretty darn close. And I'm actually even okay with a little bit of that white border there. Let's go to this side again, crop, let's bring that in. And I'm holding down control, by the way, in Photoshop. I'm not sure what the command is in Affinity, but it helps you to not snap to edges. Let's scroll down and let's get this last piece here. So one more time with the crop tool. And there's probably a more precise way to make that happen. Right, but this is again, this is going to be definitely close enough in terms of what I'm trying to achieve. Um, so be, be a little bit more precise if you can do a little bit more time. Okay, I'm just going to save that, overwrite the original JPEG file, and then back into Revit. I'm going to insert that, and this is where it's nice to have an image as a background and not just as a texture map over my surface. Um, I'm going to import. Let's go to my site plan here, and I'm going to go to insert an image, and I can select Haiti site, and open, and I'm going to change this view to a wireframe. And that allows me to see through the topo lines. down to the image below. And I'm going to get those lined up like that. And now I'm ready to start using that underlay satellite image 
with the topography to continue to develop the site inside of Revit. So super simple steps. Um, again, that integration with Formit is going to increase uh, even further over the next couple of months and years. Um, they're really looking at the compatibility of those two tools together. This is the first step, which is an amazing first step in terms of improving our efficiency in terms of building uh, these schematic sites for educational use. Cheers all.